Amen. Let's stand. Let's go to the word of the Lord. We'll be going to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and Luke chapter 4. I, I do want to just say to, I didn't get a chance to mention this, but thank you for uh, many people reached out uh, and said, you know, that they were praying for those services that we had, funeral service that we had last week. And um, I want to thank you for being diligent to that and thinking about that and praying for that. And we, we believe that the Lord blessed and helped and um, shown a light. Amen. Shown a light. And I've even gotten calls today thanking our church and congregation for um, just being a blessing to them. So thank you very much for that. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse number 1. We've read these. Uh, we're familiar with these. Uh, to everything there is a season. Everybody say there's a season. And a time to every purpose under heaven. To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under heaven. Luke chapter 4 Verse 13, you can just look to the screen. The, the Bible tells us when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. This is, of course, speaking of Jesus in the wilderness of temptation and the enemy tempted him and departed from him for a season, which meant that the temptation was for a season. And we're talking about this, the, the seasons of temptation. Or another way we could say it is the opportunities that the enemy would use in order to bring forth a fall or the temptation to fall. And in prayer, it just the Lord just reiterated to me, which I want to reiterate to you, is that being aware is our greatest weapon. It says, the Bible says, be not ignorant of his devices. And so awareness is, um, you're, you're, you're over halfway to the, to the wind when you are aware. And this is what this, this teaching is about, is to bring awareness to us. So let's put our Bibles down. Let's ask the Lord to help us tonight. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your grace in our life. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be able to, to gather together and worship you and get into your word. We have had the opportunity to lift you up. We've had the opportunity to acknowledge you in our life. We've had the opportunity in this service, God, to place you on your throne, but now God, we're going to be ministered to through your word. We ask God that it would penetrate, that it would settle, and that we would be victorious as a result. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody say amen. Amen. Shake the hand of the person that's the nearest to you, and I don't know what that means, but find them and you may be seated. To everything there is a season. There are seasons of ups, there are seasons of downs, there's seasons of good times and seasons of bad times. This just to go over the season and not not really explain them because We've already done that. But the devil, Satan, the adversary, the one that desireth our soul is looking for opportunity. He doesn't have authority over us, but he takes advantage of opportunity. He doesn't have authority unless we give him authority. 
Same as God. God doesn't have authority unless we give him authority in our life. And we, we want to submit to the Lord. We want him to be in charge. We should have that desire that in all things he is ruling and reigning in our life. We want him the Lord of all. Can somebody say amen to that? If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Well, the enemy of our soul wants to be in authority also. And if he's not in authority, he is desirous to trip us up, to cause us to fail, to look. And so he, he looks, he seeks, he is observant, and he is trying to find the weak point, the entry point, and looks for opportunities to cause us to fail. He places temptation in our life. And what we're talking about is these seasons of life that we go through. The first season that the enemy would take full advantage of. So without the Lord, there's no, there's no real necessity. He just continues uh, to uh, help us live a life that is pleasing to him. But when we find the Lord, then he has to be observant and take opportunity to cause us to fall from that relationship with the Lord. You understand the, the difference there? It's like, you know, before I was saved, I lived a miserable life. Uh, I acknowledge that. But after I got saved, it seemed like all hell broke loose. Why is that? Because, because when we weren't living for God, we were going in the same direction as the enemy. But when we started to live for God, we started going in the other direction. And when we're going in the other direction, there's nothing but opposition. Right? It's like salmon trying to swim upstream. When we, when we, we give our life to the Lord, then we start a new journey, and it's like going upstream as it were. It's not that living a life of Christianity is difficult, it's just the enemy is looking for opportunity to cause us to fail, to fall, to quit, to give up, and to turn around. It's, and, and at times in the salmon's life, maybe, uh, they don't have the opportunity to think like we do or have choice like we do, but let's just pretend that they do. Many times they may say, what is the use? Why am I struggling to get up this waterfall? Why am I struggling to, you know what a salmon, you know, remember the salmon story, right? Okay. Why am I trying to get past this, these, these, this bear? Why, why am I struggling to get through this, this stream? And uh, because, because there's purpose in that. And uh, so we, we find that Satan takes full advantage of these seasons. The first season takes place immediately after conversion. We talked uh, extensively about that. The enemy, when you come to an altar and repent, and, I, and I'm pointing to this altar, but you can repent at home, you can repent in your car, you can repent uh, uh, in, your, in your prayer closet, you can repent anywhere. When, when you repent, you're saying, I want to change, I want to turn my life around. That's what repentance is. It's asking God to forgive you, and that's making a decision to start going in a new direction. That decision then needs to be fortified with the Spirit of God, the empowerment of His Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Then God, through that infilling of the Holy Ghost, gives us the ability to then keep walking in this new direction. So immediately after conversion, immediately after that decision is made to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, either prior or after the infilling of the Spirit, the enemy rushes in. And we've seen, we've seen people get, get baptized and before their hair dries, the enemy's already jumping all over them. See people get the Holy Ghost in the altar and before they, they get home, the enemy's already got their friends calling them and ranging for parties and hookups and, and all kind of the habits and the lifestyle floods them. It's the season. It's the season. The second season of temptation takes place when 
there is a uh, experience of pain, tragedy, loss, disappointment that settles in on us. Our emotions are, are taking a toll, have been taking a toll on. Our, our ability to decipher because of the, the pain is, is down a little bit. Our caring is not as acute. And so the enemy rushes in at a point of pain or a point of loss and says, what's the use? Where's God? He doesn't love you. Why would he let this happen? Why would a God that's full of love let one of his own suffer so much pain? Why would a God that the Bible talks about so much victory at his hand and yet you have no victory in your life? The temptation, the season of temptation. The third season, and I'm just kind of briefly going over what we've already extensively covered. The third season of temptation takes place when we are on the verge of a great victory in our life. All of these have scriptural references in the past Wednesdays. When God's about to do something miraculous, so the devil, God doesn't confer with the devil, right? He doesn't say, hey, by the way, I'm about to bless, I'm about to bless them. I'm about to bless them. I just wanted you to know that. Um, no, but the devil can sense and see the pattern that has already been in existence for, for you know, for me, you know, for 4,000 years or so. And so he's able to have already figured out the operation of humanity and how the relationship between deity and humanity plays out. And so he can sense, he can see, oh, God's getting ready to do something mighty in their life. I'm going to rush in right before uh, a great victory. The fourth season of temptation takes place when the devil puts objects near us that will cause us to fall. That's, uh, or at least points out objects, at least makes them observable. Uh, we see this from the very beginning in the Garden of Eden when Eve was tempted and brought to her fall by the tree. It wasn't that she didn't know that the tree was off limits. How many know there's some things that are off limits? Is there anybody, is the rest of them listening or are they just like, can't think of anything that's off limits? We talked about that last week. The first thing that we look at is what we were told, hey, don't look at that. And we're like, don't look over there. Where? It's just human nature, right? It's just, it's just human nature. And so, you know, uh, God gave Adam the command, you can eat of everything out of this garden except that. And so he passed that on to Eve and even added God told us that we can't eat of it and we can't even touch it. And uh, she's hanging out around it. And so there's this, there's this draw to the things that we shouldn't partake of. And so the enemy uses these objects. Um, maybe she wouldn't have taken of it if he hadn't started the conversation, let's just say. She might have been hanging around it for a while and, and, the, and, the, and the, the enemy started observing, oh, she's hanging around that. Let me, let's use that against her. And so um, I don't think that he found her in the garden somewhere, took her by the hand and led her all the way to the tree and then had the conversation. I believe that probably she was already there. It's just my opinion. It's not in the scripture. It's when he takes advantage of things that are near to us that uh, would cause us to fall. Where we put our eyes soon finds its way into our hearts. And the enemy understands this. He understands this. And I, I ended last week 
because uh, what happens is, is we can get into a conversation of rationalizing and justifying, and then it won't be long before we fall to that temptation. But we have to fight it. Somebody say, fight it. We have to fight the temptation. We have to resist the temptation. We have to stand firm against the temptation. And when we are in these vulnerable seasons, we have to recognize that we are at our weakest. And if you were to kind of look back, and, and, and I'm not saying you, I'm saying we, obviously I have, I'm, this is what has brought this up, is when we look back and we see the moments that we were weak. We see the moments that we did fall. We see the moments that we did stutter step. We might identify that we were in a vulnerable state. And so everything that happens in our history should help us to fortify our future. And so it's like, wow, okay, so I see that when that, when that was going on in my life, um, man, I, I, the enemy took advantage of that, and I, I fell, I gave in, I was weak. And so the next time that comes around, <laughs> that moment of uh, challenge or, or difficulty or, or about to get a victory or the object is hanging around or we're hanging around an object long enough that we something sparks in us the red flag pops up and we go whoa 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 this is one of those times and we 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 understand what's about to happen so we have to be on guard and understand that the enemy is diligently looking and trying to find those moments where he can come in and cause a failure in our life. We have to fight with all of our heart. Your heart's got to be in it. <clears throat> Your heart's got to be in it. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We've got to rein this emotional passionate, willful thing that we have. It can rule us. It can cause us to go in directions. We got to keep it, keep it in check. When we are going through a season, we have to keep it in check because the enemy will use it, that moment, to his advantage. Out of it are all the issues of life. Out of our passions and our will and our desires are all the issues of life. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 19 says, Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way, in the way, on the path. Keep walking straight. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 2, <clears throat> calls us to set our affection on things above and not on things on the earth. And so we are diligent. Somebody say diligent. Diligent towards that. It's the items that tend to get us. We can become item oriented if we're not careful and focused. And that can cause us to fall. Whether it's a job, whether it's a car, whether it's a house whether it's clothing, if we are not careful, Judas fell because of the money bag. Esau really lost his way because he just, it, a pot of stew. Achan, the Bible says in the Old Testament, fell because he just, he longed for a wedge of gold and, and purple garment, raiment. Never got to use any of it, never got to look at it, never got to enjoy it because he dug a hole under his tent and he hid it. And he was so, it was that moment and that season in his life that the enemy 
got a hold of them. And so it's important in this particular season that for us to be aware and count on it. That the devil will place things in our way that will be intoxicating to our flesh. And he will cause us to want it. We, 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 all you got to do is show it to us and we, we take over from there, right? I want to use it. I want it. I want to get it, right? All, the, all to the destruction of our spiritual health. The fifth season is after receiving great grace in our life. After you've experienced a great demonstration of the love of God, the grace of God, the power of God in your life, the devil will come and attack with fierce temptations. Why is that? Because more times than not, we find ourselves in a place of spiritual relaxation after the Lord ushers in His grace forgiveness, his mercy in our life. When we look at the, the life of Peter in Matthew chapter 6, one minute, he has received this great revelation. The next minute, the Lord is calling him the devil. One moment he's, when we, we look at the life of Joseph in Genesis, one moment he is flushed with pride, his father's love towards him. He wears his coat of many colors and he struts around and he's excited about it. The next minute he's sold off by his jealous brothers. Children of Israel, they experience the collapsing of the walls of Jericho. Then days later, they are defeated by a much lesser opponent. Moses, he's receiving the law on the mountain in the thickness of God's glory. And then it wasn't just but a short time, he's... He's throwing them and crushing them on the ground because of the idolatry at the foot of the mountain. These massive swings happen when the enemy realizes that something grand has just been delivered and we have to be careful that we don't relax. You know, it happens just in the natural also. I experience it as a pastor. If you're a parent, you may have observed it. And as an individual, you may have experienced it. Something is weighing heavy on your heart. Maybe you've done something. Maybe we've done something and it's, it, our conscience is bothering us. And we, we expose it, or it's exposed. And the weight is lifted by, just by the exposure of it, or the communication of it, or the confrontation of it. How many have ever experienced that? It's like, oh man, I feel a lot better. Oh, goodness sakes. It's not resolved. Right? It's just been lifted. And up until that point, it's hard to sleep, sweats, scared, nervous, sick to your stomach. But then when it's confronted, there's a sense of relief. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And we have to be careful right there that the enemy, that we don't fall to a 
second temptation of the same. Because literally the relief comes, but the consequence hasn't hit yet. And so there's a relaxation moment right there. I don't know if I'm making sense. The enemy recognizes that when God forgives us, we still may have to harvest the crop of the seed that we sowed. That's one thing that's kind of challenging. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I came to God and I, I asked for forgiveness. He forgave me and I'm still going to jail. There is, you know, I, I, it's, there's still the principle of what you sow, you shall reap. And so it's in those in-between times, and I'm not really referring to the consequence side, but it's, it's the relief side that, that, that we have to be super careful about, being too relieved and relaxed. The enemy will rush in. The enemy will rush in. And Peter he just was given the revelation of who Jesus was. Jesus confirms that. And he's, he's riding, riding that. He feels good about it. The grace of God delivered that revelation. No man told you this. Joseph, it's not his fault that his father made him a coat. They didn't have to talk about everybody bowing down to him either. Of course, if he hadn't, if he wouldn't have started the process of where God wanted to take him. He didn't, he didn't fall. He maintained. And Moses didn't need to throw the, the tablets down and crush them. That was a, that was a point of, of anger. He, he, he succumbed to the temptation to give in to his own emotion of anger. Do you see that? God just, God just literally visited him. And Moses is carrying tablets of stone that were etched with the finger of God. Great grace. It was after that moment that he he fell to the temptation of anger. And God's like, I got to do that all over again. I got to build these things again. If you are in any type of ministry, if you teach a Bible study, if you bless somebody with a word, if you encourage somebody, there's a, that's, that's God using you. That's, the grace of God ushering his presence and anointing and you are a conduit that he speaks through. If you ever are in the pulpit and you feel that, that anointing rest upon you, it's not just here, it's, it's when you're doing ministry. There's a feeling that comes, it's not human, it's supernatural, it's spiritual. It's the, it's the anointing of God. And it is in those moments afterwards, it's in those moments afterwards that we have to be most observant and careful. Because the enemy knows that we have just experienced something supernatural and our natural self cannot handle that. We don't have the capacity to handle it. And I'm, I'm getting off into the weeds here, I guess, but... Some of the greatest experiences in my life have been after I've left a Bible study. And, I, and I'm feeling like, whoa, that was incredible. Man, the presence of God was so thick and rich. And, and I didn't, I mean, the, 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 the scriptures were just coming to my mind. I don't, I don't even know where they were coming from. And the Lord was helping. And, and man, and then some lower base human 
gets in my way or does something to me and I have, I have to respond to that. I don't know if anybody else has experienced that before. You know, for 10 years, we, we, we drove to Hagerstown and, and, and I had, a, you know, an hour's drive back to come down off of that. And coming over those two mountains and traveling on I-70, getting on to 15 and then getting on to 270, had a lot of opportunity just in, just in that. A lot of opportunity for the, for the enemy and the next day into the enemy to come in and say, you're not, for me to find out I'm not, I'm not all that. The sixth season, the sixth season is when we are at uh, the end of our life. And it's not just the individual, but it's those that surround them. I, Sister Nita's here, we prayed for her. We stand near her and by her and around her at the loss of her father. There's no doubt. And I can assuredly say that Brother Johnson was a, a godly man all the way to his last breath. But not everybody in those moments responds that way. The pain, the loss of strength, the taking away of the vitality is very discouraging, can be very discouraging. And our temper and our disappointment can rise up. Can somebody say amen to that? I'm not preaching his funeral right now, but uh, when he went into the hospital, he just, he told me and everybody else that he'd be going home that night. And uh, he had to rein that in because he had to, he had to realize and accept that he needed, he needed medical attention. But when things are beginning to be taken away from you, it's a great opportunity for the enemy to come in and begin to sow discouragement feelings. And as we get older, we, st we don't have to be on our deathbed to, to feel this. As we get older, we start to experience the loss of capacity and capability. I got my hair cut today. I don't know if you can tell. It just got a little off the sides. And uh, I was at a brand new place, right? A brand new place with a brand new person. I don't know if they're brand new to haircutting, but they were brand new to, I got my money's worth, but they were, they were brand new to me. And uh, I said to, I said to the lady, I said, uh, your story. <laughs> Somebody took a chair off the end of the row. That was the problem. Uh, seems almost uh, worthless to continue, doesn't it? So I said, uh, do you know what color my hair is? She said, well, I said, when I was growing up, it was strawberry red. And it was. Fire engine red. I was a red-headed freckle face kid. You hear the other redhead laughing. <laughs> and I said, uh, you know, somebody told me. Now, first of all, 
Who goes to a brand new place for the first time with somebody that you don't know to get your hair cut? You only do that when you get old. You're like, who cares? It'll grow back, right? There's, no, I mean, I'm telling you what, I, I would never go, I mean, uh-uh, you're not going to a new place. No, you're not going to catch me going to it. I, I, I was hungry, and, you know, there's so many places to eat around here um, when you're working here at the church. And so I went up to Mon- Monrovia to the 7-Eleven, because uh, that's my favorite place to get something to eat. Fine dining, yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's, isn't it right, Khadijah? It's fine dining. You ask, you ask Mariah and Michaela what their favorite restaurant is. They're going to tell you. 7 Eleven. <laughs> so I was standing there and I was like, I was looking over here and I was like, that's a haircut place, man. I think I need, I need a haircut. I'm going to go in there and get a haircut. I don't even know why I'm telling you this story. No idea. But I was looking at, the more she cut my hair, the more I could see a couple gray hairs. And I said, do you see gray in there? And now this is the first time she was real cautious about how she answered that question. She goes, well, it kind of looks strawberry blonde. I'm like, no, it's gray. And I can't see. I have to print my notes out pretty big. I can't walk up too many flights of stairs in a row because I get winded. And it's easy to get discouraged by that kind of stuff. Yeah. When stuff starts to be taken away from you. It's a season that the enemy would come in now, not everybody responds the same way to, the, to these seasons, right? Not everybody responds. I mean, I'm responding very well to the whole can't see thing. Right? I'm not, I'm not wearing glasses. I won't wear glasses. As long as I can keep printing bigger print, there's no need to wear glasses. It's a, it's a, it's an admitting, right? It's an admission. The day I come in here with glasses, I did that one time. I was teaching something that I couldn't make the print any bigger. And so I had to go to Giant and I had to buy reading glasses. And, and when it, afterwards, everybody was like, were you wearing, were, did you, yeah, reading glasses? No. But as life goes on, I'm experiencing this, as life goes on and things start to be taken away from you, you begin to experience the vulnerability and you begin to experience the lessening. And the more you grow and mature, the more pain you experience and the more loss of strength you begin to incur. Anybody but me? Is there anybody else out there that this is happening to? Or am I in the junior class? What is going on? I was telling, I was telling my wife, I was like, man, I gotta take some vitamins or something. I don't know what's going on. Like, that always lasts about two days. And I'm like, these things, I can't keep track of these things. We have to know that this body is wasting away and that it's okay. It's not that we give into it, but we understand the process of it. And that's why it's so important that when we have our strength that we don't give God the leftover, but we give God 
the first fruits of our strength. So that in the end, we don't lay there with regret. And we don't lay there saying, what's happened to me? And how come I can't do what I used to be able to do? And, and whose fault is it? It's not my fault. But we should be able to look back and realize that our life has not been wasted when it's been faithfully lived for the Lord. Faithfully lived for the Lord. I was just struck by this every time I talked to Brother Johnson. And uh, he made me feel old too because he kept saying, Rev. <laughs> Rev. <laughs> Have I made it there? I've made it to the Rev stage. <laughs> he would say, it's just, it's what it is. It's where we are. Can't do nothing about it. The body is going down. In essence, his words were, can't get discouraged by it. He's been faithful. But we can't live forever. That's what he told me. We can't live forever, but we do need to have confidence that when we did live, that we lived correctly. So the enemy would come in with discouragement. You can't see like you used to be able to see. You can't run at all or hop, or skip, or jump. If somebody's chasing you, they're gonna get you. If you're chasing them, you're not gonna get them. And it's discouraging. And then the enemy would come in, what's the use? Why even try? Don't even, it's not even worth volunteering. You got nothing to offer. You got nothing to give. Why are you even trying? Why are you even, there's no motive. Then the motivation starts to wane. And then it's like, well, I'll just let the next, that we, we come up with it, I'll just let the next generation take it. Well, who's going to teach the next generation? Who's going to model the next generation? Who's going to help the next generation? Who's going to be the ones that spur on the next generation? We have to, <laughs> Sister Nia, this, this stuff was, I wrote this stuff weeks ago we have to be at the place where we are now ready to be offered second timothy chapter 4 speaks to this and we have to be assured in ourself because I did what I did when I could do what I could do. That there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me. <laughs> and he's going to give it to me on that day. There is no reason that we cannot be overcomers. And we do not need to fail in any season that we find ourselves in. We need to be informed. We need to be prepared. We need to be ready. We need to have our hearts set. We need to have our eyes fixed. We need to have our mission in the forefront. But when seasons and the vicissitudes of life and the ups and downs and the seasons come, we can be overcomers. We do not have to fall or fail. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common 
to man. This is something we should digest. That we should say, oh, I'm not something special and I'm the only person that's ever had to experience this. No, there's somebody else that's already gone through it. They've been victorious. They've overcome it. And you can overcome it because they overcome it. It's common. What you're going through is common. Sorry to bust my bubble or your bubble, but it's common. It's an everyday thing. It says God is faithful, isn't he? He's faithful and he will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. He's not going to put on you more than you can bear. He's going to hold the enemy back just before you collapse. He's going to hold them back. You can handle it. You can deal with it. You can make it. And with every temptation, he will make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. This is the promise of God. The promise of God is, or the understanding is that we're going to go through seasons where the enemy will take advantage of it. The promise of God is that when you're in that season, he will always provide a way of escape if you'll access it. There is no temptation that God hasn't already created an escape route for. Jeremiah 29, 11 are one of our favorite verses, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. This is the great conclusion, is that the Lord has mapped out victory in each and every one of our lives. Let's stand. And that regardless of what the enemy does, regardless of what he says, and regardless of what he sets up, the Lord, by access, has already made a way of escape. So the good news and the bad news, what do you want first? The bad news is, and I'm, I'm being facetious, the bad news is, is that Temptation is going to come because to everything there's a season. If it's bad news, it's just understanding. Temptation is going to come. But you're equipped. You're knowledgeable. You've got it figured out. That when I'm, when I'm feeling depressed, just to let the red flag go up, bing, the devil's on his way. Don't give in. Hold on, come on, it's going to take everything I got on the inside. When, when I get fired from my job, there's loss, there's pain, there's tragedy. Bing! The devil's on his way. I'm going to make it though, because I know he's coming. He don't know I know, but I know. And I'm not giving in. That's, if that's the bad news, that's the bad news. The good news is, is that he's not... The, the Lord is not going to let it be more than you can handle. And he's always going to make a way of escape from that temptation. This is a part of spiritual warfare. Is to recognize and understand the seasons of your own personal life. The writer says, yeah, man, that sin that so easily besets me, it's coming around again. That's what it is. It's not the sin that I constantly live in. It's the sin that shows up every now and then that gets me. And he starts to calculate and figure it out. Hey, man, this thing's like clockwork. If you calculate it and you look at it, you can almost see the clockwork happening. That sin, that, that temptation, it stays away for a little while and then shows up. Stays away for a little while, temptation, and shows up. Stays away. It's the sin that so easily besets me. That temptation only turns to sin when we partake. Being tempted is not a sin. 
Temptation is a part of the enemy's warfare against us. Sin is what happens when we partake of the temptation. So devil, don't, don't get me, I'm not gonna get discouraged just because you're tempting me and think I'm a bad person just because there's all of these temptations in my life. It's, it's you're, just, you're just going on overtime trying to get me. No, the good news is, is that God will always make a way. Why don't we just lift our hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for your victory in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for your victory in my life. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your victory. The way of escape, Lord God. Not putting on us more than we can bear, Lord Jesus. Help us, God, to recognize the seasons in our own life. Help us recognize, Lord Jesus, the seasons that the enemy would take advantage of in our own life. And give us the strength, Lord God, to withstand the enemy and the evil day. Having done all to stand, we have made a decision to stand, Lord God, to stand. Reach over to somebody, put your hand on their shoulder, grab them by the hand and pray for them right now. God, give them the strength. Give them the strength, Lord Jesus, that they would, would have the passion and desire, Lord, that in the midst of their struggle, in the midst of their season, that God, they would be victorious in Jesus' name. That they would be victorious in Jesus' name. Help them, Lord God. Deliver them, Lord Jesus. Strengthen them, be with them, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus, for it, God. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, help my brother and my sister, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, in those seasons. Help us to recognize, Lord, it's, it's not against us, it's just a part of life. But the enemy is against us. And we withstand him. We withstand him. In Jesus, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand praise of victory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Just one more announcement before we're dismissed. Next week is, is youth camp. And there is a, 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 an opportunity, I guess, or a um, they're making provision for adults during the day. But anyone is invited to come up um, during the day. There are adult classes um, at 1.30 every day and the evening service at 7.30. If you want to come and be a part of that and just show up. We are having service here Wednesday night. Don't go to camp on Wednesday night. Go to camp on a different night. Okay? Don't say, well, I'm going to go to church one night. I might as well go to the night that I go. usually go to church and then go on Wednesday night. I'm going to be at camp all week long. I'm coming here on Wednesday night. And uh, if you want to go to camp, they don't have a Friday night service. Don't go on Friday night because you're going to think the rapture happened. Don't go on Friday night. But, uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night um, is camp. Is it Monday night too? Monday night also. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You're invited to go, uh, but we are having service here. No youth, no children's service on Wednesday night here, just in the sanctuary. So everybody will be in the sanctuary. God bless you. Shake somebody's hand. Amen. Tell them you're a winner. Hallelujah. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.